Hey, I hope you've had a really good weekend. The sun is shining on us all over here in London and I'm about to go for a walk straight after this. I wanted to do a quick video today just on the back of a question I was asked a couple days ago over on my Instagram account, which is Kim on Skin, one word. Have I really got dermatillomania because my skin is so clear? And the person felt like they were unable to relate to me because my physical skin was a lot more clear than what that person knew those with dermatillomania to look like. They didn't believe that I legitimately had dermatillomania because I had clear skin. And this video is just to kind of quickly give my reasoning of like how I, I feel about that question and why it's important to also talk about it. This person has every right to ask a question like that. Obviously those with dermatillomania understand how easy it is to develop skin picking marks, no matter what it is that you focus on. Everybody has different areas of the body that they may focus on more, they may prefer to pick more than other areas. And there may be reasons to pick the skin. So say someone focuses on ingrown hairs, or they focus on psoriasis marks that they have, or eczema, or acne. For me, it was acne. And one of the things I did to help decrease my acne was to go on Rakuten, in other words, isotretinoin, which I will add up there for you to check out. I was on it for nine out of 12 months before deciding that enough was enough and I didn't want to do it anymore. I had learned my lesson, but it has helped in clearing my skin up. Now, if you check out that video, I do go into my reasoning of why I quit early. I had a lot of side effects and it's not necessarily something that I would recommend per se, but it did help me clear my skin. And when acne was one of the physical reasons I would assess my skin overly and I become extremely obsessive over how my skin felt or looked. Removing that reason, removing the acne definitely did help me so that I was skin picking a lot less. However, I do also talk about it in another one of my videos, how compulsive skin picking, aka dermatillomania or exoriation disorder, is not actually wiped off and removed from your life as soon as you get clear skin. If you haven't already checked that video, I will also link it there for you if you would like. And that is definitely something that I figured out the hard way myself. When I was on the isotretinoin, I definitely thought that it would decrease my skin picking. However, I also knew that realistically, I was still gonna have my reasons with my general anxiety disorder really making me feel overwhelmed day to day from things that are outside of my control. And it's true. I do talk in a lot of my videos, all my Instagram posts, I talk about the things that have helped me and my mental side of this disorder, because at the end of the day, it is a disorder, it's not a habit. I'm not just going to one day think, oh, I'm not gonna skin pick anymore. And so it's really important to constantly be aware of the things that normally just make us go straight into skin picking. And when we aren't, that's when the intrusive thoughts and the feelings that trigger those urges to skin pick arise. And before you know it, we have marks all over the place. I have got marks, I still have scars on my body, but I also did use various things to help the scarring, which I will also link in this video if you wanna check those out too. Now, when I was asked about, I have clear skin now, that obviously means that I don't have dermatillomania. It's really hard to resonate with what I'm saying and believe me as a person when I have clear skin. I do understand this point of view and I think it's a really valid question. I appreciate the fact it was asked. And it was also something that I was kind of thinking also. I remember my partner, when I started talking about my dermatillomania, he rightly did say to me, be careful that you don't then skin pick for the sake of creating content to suit other people, to help other people. And that's really important. You know, there was some times where I did think, um, well, I haven't skin picking that much. So does that mean that what I'm saying is not believable or understandable? Do, do people not really think I'm being authentic and, and true here. But the thing is, is that I also don't actually have to show my marks if I don't want to. Another thing to consider is that everybody has different areas of the body that they focus on most. And that's a really interesting perspective because it reminds us that there are perhaps friends, family, work colleagues, um, which I've also got to know in my life after documenting my dermatillomania, I have found people of all those categories 
talk to me about their dermatillomania, which I had no idea of until I opened up. Why I'm saying this is there are so many people in our waking life that we just don't think have a disorder such as this, but in fact, they're just very good at hiding it. We forget that we were very good at hiding it. We try our best to conceal the marks that we create. We avoid going somewhere if we've just picked all these things we do to try and help save ourselves from that torment of feeling judged or criticized by someone else. We forget that those we love may also be doing that as well. We're not the only people that feel those feelings and are scared about being judged and criticized. And so whilst we're too busy thinking about how we look and trying to conceal the marks that we create, we often don't realize that there are people in our lives that could very well be doing the same thing. But because they focus on areas that are not that visibly noticeable straight away, that doesn't mean that they don't do it. And that's the case for me, because the areas that I compulsively skin pick now, if I find myself doing it, which I do find myself doing it every day, it may only be for a couple minutes, it's a lot less frequent now than it was, say a couple years ago, I would be doing it for an hour, and now I'm only doing it for maybe two minutes. Some days I don't even do it. Some days I do have slip ups, but that's totally okay. But the areas I do focus on are not usually the areas that are really visible. So you're looking at me right now and I have obviously my face here, I've got shoulder there, neck, chest, but you don't see very visible marks. Now these are the areas that I have obviously focused on a lot within this time, helping to reduce the scarring but also I'm not focusing on skin picking in those areas so much now. That doesn't mean that I've stopped skin picking altogether. It just means the areas I'm focusing on are the areas that you can't potentially see. And I'm not the only one who does that. So it's really important that we are patient and compassionate to others. If I have opened up about compulsive skin picking, if you see them and you're like, well, I can't see any visible marks, so I don't believe that. Be understanding of the fact that maybe they have concealed it very well. A large part of dermatillomania is the aftermath ritual of trying to undo what we do. So the skincare that we use, that ritual in itself is very much part of the obsessive compulsion. We spend probably just as much, maybe if not more of the time, than we do with skin picking. Trying to conceal and undo what we've done, whether it is with skincare or makeup or both. And these are things that we've kind of worked to an art if we've had it for a hell of a long time. Also to be mindful that everyone is different. You may, for example, pick for an hour or so every day, but then there's someone else who has dermatillomania that hasn't picked for a month and are doing really well. And all of a sudden they just have a full skin pick and blowout. Everybody is different. It's a bit like depression or anxiety, for example, even though this is a physical coping mechanism, there may be times where you function a lot better with it. And then there's other times where you really don't function very well at all, or it can feel really overwhelming one moment. And in the next, it's not too bad. It's bearable. You can get through it. You feel more patient or compassionate with yourself. A lot of us also work at certain areas. So we let one area that we've picked at maybe yesterday heal and we focus focus on another area today. That's really common. I know that I've done that for many years and these areas tend to be the areas that I don't put out on show. And it can be really awkward if all of a sudden we need to show that area. I mean, just yesterday, it was scorching hot and I was sitting in a back garden and I was wearing a hoodie and I knew that I had been picking on my, a bit on my shoulder and chest. And those that I was with were suggesting, would you like to wear a dress? Would you like to change and do this? But I didn't feel comfortable doing that. It's really easy for me these days to, if I feel like I'm in the, the right mindset to explain and just be honest, then I will. But if I don't want to, then I'm also really good at making up excuses. We're too busy focusing on how we react to things. We're probably not as mindful when we notice that those we love or friends, family, whoever, are making up their excuses. When It's not natural for us to instantly think, oh, they must have dermatillomania. No, because a lot of us think that we are literally on our own in this ocean of dermatillomania. So I just kind of wanted to vent a little bit, not really vent, but kind of go into a bit more detail of 
why you may see me with clear skin and think, well, she may not have dermatillomania, but please understand my point of view. It is, I don't always post my marks. I used to more in the past. I'm a bit more considerate now because I am aware that it could be triggering for some people. I don't post them on a regular basis. Now I tend to focus on the more mental side of it. And that's something that I'm definitely wanting to focus more of my time on. I enjoy creating content that helps people see dermatillomania in a different way, offer them a different perspective of how they may feel, rather than just focusing on things like um, stopping for a certain amount of time, which I have mentioned in an another video, how I believe like stopping skin picking doesn't actually work. It actually creates more pressure. But by understanding myself a lot more, being patient with myself, understanding that this is a marathon and not a sprint, also like, why this has all started, be more compassionate with myself on, okay, this, this is understandable. You know what? We can break this down. We can work with this. It's manageable. I don't need to stop it. I don't need to fix this. There's no pressure. I eliminate that pressure. And by doing that, that has made me skin pick a hell of a lot less. And when I do find myself skin picking, it's easier for me to stop doing it. And it's easier for me to just get back on with my day if I have. My day isn't a write off the way it used to be. I'm not feeling, you know, emotional ruined the way that I used to feel after skin picking and that's because I've removed the pressure I'm aware of how pressure can easily affect us and how easy it is for us to just put pressure on whatever we're doing it's so easy for us if we want something to be like right I gotta add pressure I gotta do this this has to be done I need to do this I gotta get this done and that can easily turn something that we were once excited about into something that we're feeling really anxious about and unsettled. And that's something that I really wanted to make part of my life was to eliminate the pressure and be a lot easier on myself, which has obviously decreased my skin picking. So I hope this video helps. I hope it gives you a bit of a fresh perspective. I hope it may clear, uh, pardon the pun, like your question, if you have seen me with clear skin and you have wondered that, you know, is it the fact that I've put loads a concealer on or is it that I actually don't skin pick I don't actually have dermatillomania and I just talk about it I've had compulsive skin picking disorder for 15 years so I know when to manipulate it I know when I to hide it I know when if I feel like I skin pick and I go towards it you know it's more easy for me to go to an area that I don't have to then show I think it's another thing now that I'm creating more videos I'm more aware of that I'm more aware that um, I might have to record a video that day do I really want to skin pick that area and so these are things that just kind of sit in your subconscious you don't really think about until you're you're having to sit and question it and when I was given that question that really did make me think hmm okay I can see that but it's important that I explain it so I hope this video helps do let me know if you have any questions as always thank you so much for checking this video out and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel it makes all the difference I love getting to know you I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again in three days for the next video bye